record, page 50, 55 from the committee's interview with FBI employee Roya Demlo, who you just spoke about, which took place on July 17, 2023. Uh, in that line, she says, uh, the question was asked, okay, if someone were to leave here today, were to leave this interview and were to suggest or imply that when you said the laptop was real, that it meant that the FBI had affirmatively determined in October 2020 that the laptop belonged to Hunter Biden, that the contents belonged to Hunter Biden, and that the contents had not been manipulated in some way, would they be representing what you said, correct? Answer by Ms. Demlo. They would be representing what I said because I don't have much knowledge of that. They would be misrepresenting what I said because I don't have much knowledge of that. Uh, because this committee likes to misrepresent or leave off complete sentences of what individuals said, I'd like to introduce this into the record. Objection. This time. Thank you. Uh, and as to no comment by an FBI, that's usually what they say when there's an ongoing investigation, particularly when it's a couple of days before an election. But why are we here? Why? You know, that's been the question that quite a number of people have been asking me. Why are you having this hearing? What does this have to do with inflation? What does this have to do with the cost of living? What does this have to do with the everyday lives of Americans, the thing that the Republican Party said that they would focus on if they had control of the House? Why would the Republican leadership and the committee majority give a hearing and a platform to the witnesses today? specifically to Mr. Kennedy, a man who has recently claimed that COVID-19 is targeted to attack Caucasians and black people. The people who are most immune are Ashkenazi Jews and Chinese. And before that, in his film, Medical Racism, The New Apartheid, that film stated that COVID-19 vaccines do not work for black children because of their, quote, kick-ass kick kind of immune system. That hyper, superhuman, subhuman kind of language. Also said, he also said, even in Hitler's Germany, you could cross the Alps to Switzerland. You could hide in an attic like Anne Frank did to imply Jews in Nazi Germany had more freedoms than unvaccinated Americans during the COVID-19 pandemic. Now, many of my Republican colleagues across the dais will rush to cover that they have Mr. Kennedy here because they want to protect his free speech that they do not believe in American censorship. This is not the kind of free speech that I know of, the free speech that is protected by the Constitution's First Amendment. But free speech is not an absolute. The Supreme Court has stated that. Uh, and others' free speech that is allowed, hateful, abusive rhetoric, does not need to be promoted in the halls of the people's house. This Republican charge of free speech is being used by Republican members to promote quasi-science, things such as the replacement theory that says that brown people are replacing good white Americans here in this country. Let's not remember that this country first belonged to brown Native American people. It's a rallying cry for bigotry and hate. There are members of the Republican conference who also frequently suggest that Americans have to deal with COVID rules as the same as oppression of Nazi Germany. Indeed, some have even questioned whether the Holocaust took place. We have staffers who openly follow white supremacy without any condemnation of the Republican conference. Some give it chuckles, slaps on the back, shrugs, all under the mantra of free speech. It's a free country. You absolutely have a right to say what you believe, but you don't have the right to a platform, public or private. We don't have to give one of the largest platforms of our democracy, Congress, this hearing. Our right does not mean that we as Americans are not free from accountability. And that's what's distressing about this hearing. Even knowing what they know about Mr. Kennedy's hateful, evidence-free rhetoric, and even though they've invited any number of witnesses to make their point, Speaker McCarthy, Chairman Jordan, affirmatively chose to give this a platform. 
They intentionally chose to elevate this rhetoric to give these harmful, dangerous views a platform in the halls of the United States Congress. That's endorsing that speech. That's not just supporting free speech. They have co-signed on idiotic, bigoted messaging. There's, it's a conscious choice. There's no doubt as to why they're making the choice. It's not to, guard, to guard free speech or to ensure equality for all. All of this, as you'll hear throughout this hearing, is to show us by their conduct over and over and again that any attack on Joe Biden to get Donald Trump back in the White House is what they need to do. They think that by hurting the Biden administration, by putting Mr. Kennedy on display, they have said that he's only running for censorship. I think people run for the President of the United States because they want to advance the American people. Over the last eight months, the extreme MAGA majority has spent its time, not to mention tons of taxpayer money, something that they're always so cautious about, on baseless investigations that have gone nowhere all in an effort to serve as a legislative arm of the Trump campaign and discredit any agency that dares to hold the president or those that work with him or who have the same ideals that he has accountable for those that are such as white supremacy, such as election deniers, such as insiders and those who engaged in the riots of January 6th. Truth be told, I have no idea whether the chairman actually believes any of the stuff. I don't. It's not a question I've asked him or one that's necessarily even important. But it's clear that one aim of his investigation is to bully tech and media companies into turning a blind eye to right-wing extremist conspiracies, from QAnon to the Great Replacement Theory, as they spread across their platforms, even when those theories violate very basic terms of service about deliberate disinformation and promoting violence. Let's not even think about what happens in 2024 with Russian trolls, Iran, China, trying to interfere in our elections. And the bullying extends far beyond tech companies. Witness after witness have testified to the treatment they received from Chairman Jordan and his team. One of our earliest witnesses, Nina Jankovic, told the committee about receiving thousands of death threats and being told to go into hiding while she was pregnant with her first child, after Chairman Jordan first posted a doctored video of her. When Politico asked Mr. Chairman Jordan about the threats, his office responded, she deserves to be held accountable. Anyone who doesn't agree with their point of view deserves whatever hatred and threats are thrown at them. Now, I'm across the hall from Mr. Jordan and several months ago, I saw somebody who seemed to be threatening to his office and the Capitol Police were moving them away. And I was grateful that they were doing that because I don't want anyone to harm him or his staff for their rhetoric, for the things that they say. That's inappropriate. That's unconscionable. Another witness, this one a current member of federal law enforcement who spent years protecting Americans from harm, described receiving threatening mail, not just to her work office, but to her home address. Someone out there has figured out where this person lives and is targeting them based on disinformation this committee itself spread. She summed it up in a single sentence, I'm frankly scared. And why does the chairman send this movement to intimidate witnesses? To change their behavior, of course, to make it less safe for law enforcement officers to, to enforce the law and less likely that researchers and companies will combat the spread of hate and violence online. One witness, an academic whose organization helped identify disinformation threats to election processes and procedures, described the threats sent to him and his family in detail. When the Republican staff asked him if he would consider performing the same research for 2024 elections, he said, quote, since this investigation has cost the university now approaching seven figures in legal fees, it's been pretty successful, I think, in discouraging us from making it worthwhile for us to do a study for 2024. Another witness, a researcher who analyzed massive data sets 
to assess the way that rumors spread online was explicit and personal about the effect of the threats on her life. I mean, quite frankly, I don't have kids. And if I did, I would no longer be doing this work. I'm worried about my students. I know they're worried about doing this kind of work because of these kinds of threats and what they see that I'm going through. And at the same time, I just think the work is so important and I wanna make sure it keeps going. So I don't, so I don't wanna step off that stage. I don't want, I think we have like special skills that can be really useful and helpful and make our, help our country grow stronger. And this is having a chilling effect. And it's not just me. Other researchers are experiencing the same thing. These are the fruits of this committee's majority investigations. If MAGA Republicans agree with you, you're given a platform to spread any conspiracy theories, no matter how harmful. And if they disagree with you, you get death threats until you have to go away. These folks have a plan. They want to force social media companies to promote conspiracy theories because they think that's the only way their candidate can win the 2024 election. They want to bully the experts into abandoning their work on disinformation to pave the way. They want to give expression to the most vile sorts of speech here in this committee room because it prepares the ground for their own conspiracy theories and pseudoscience. And they apparently don't care how many people are hurt or die as a consequence of their actions either through lies about vaccines or threats to the safety of witnesses, because nothing, nothing is more important to them than power. It's a free country. Both Chairman Jordan and Mr. Kennedy are free to say whatever they want. It's the chairman's right to promote any of the views he wants to promote. But that freedom doesn't mean that the rest of us can't see what they're doing and demand something better from our representatives from my colleagues, from this Congress. Be better than the witnesses, my colleagues. Let's be better. Let's get about the business, the real business of the American people and stop the division, the divisiveness that is being promoted through this committee. I yield back.